Hey actors, it's Wendy Elaine Wright, the Hollywood Talent Manager, and I would like to share a post that was um, put in our Facebook group, Talent Managers for Actors. Samantha Stiglitz, who is a casting director, wrote this post uh, today, and I think it's just helpful. It reminds me that you guys probably need to know the difference between a co-star, a guest star, a recurring role, and a series regular role. So a co-star is usually a very small role in a TV show that is not about the main storyline. Um, for example, say you're the star of the show and you walk into a flower shop and you ask how much for a dozen roses and the person says 1999, did you want red roses or white roses? The florist is a co-star. It has nothing to do with the storyline of the whole show. They are simply letting you know that the main actor is getting flowers for somebody. So the waitress in the diner may also be a co-star. They may say, you know, do you want your eggs over easy or medium? They're not about the story. Now the story could be, let's say it's a murder show. It's like um, NCIS or CSI. And the, the series regulars, who are the main characters on the show every single week, they are investigating a murder. And the person that's killed someone that week is the guest star, typically. They are fundamental to the story. They're the guest star of the series, of the show that week. And what they did or didn't do, or the witnesses, these can be guest stars also, or co-stars. And so what Samantha says is the difference between the co-star and the guest star sometimes is tricky because it's mostly determined by the budget of the episode. And this has become more trickier over time. It used to be very cut and dry. You know, five lines and under and that's a co-star period. But now um, there are very large co-stars which could be guest stars, but they don't have it in the budget. In other words, some of these shows are on a tight budget and even though the co-star has a lot bigger part than they used to, they're still calling it a co-star. When in the past it would have been a guest star because of the size of the role. Sometimes it makes me wonder, are they just trying to get more from the actor without paying them? Oh, don't do that. So that sometimes can be tricky, and, and whether it's a co-star or guest star literally comes down to what's written in your contract. That's kind of how you have to decide it nowadays. If, you're, if it's written in your contract that it's a co-star and you have four pages of dialogue, it used to be a guest star, but it's written as a co-star, so that means you're accepting less pay for more work. I digress. But it's true. The industry, there's some tricky spaces there. But anyway, the series regular is the leads of the TV shows. Well, the series lead is, you know, like the main star. But the people that recur sometimes, not all the time, they're sometimes in certain episodes, those are not series regulars. Those are called recurring characters. The character recurs. So that means they show up again in another episode. A co-star can show up again. Let's say the flower shop owner or the coffee shop owner. And, you know, every few weeks or every few months, the main characters go in that coffee shop. And then you see that same waitress again. They're not a series regular, but their, sh their character comes back again because the cast is in that diner again or in that flower shop again. And you want to see the same person at work there. So that can happen. Um... She writes that each of these has a different audition process. Yes, they have a very different audition process. Series regulars are extremely well vetted. Uh, a lot of times they're on a short list for the network, meaning the network has seen them many, many, many times before. They have had co-stars, guest stars, recurring roles on plenty of other seasons, on other shows, on other networks, and now they're on a list for the network of like people were seriously considering as series regulars. Series regulars have to be able to prove that they can be number one on the call sheet, that they can handle massive amounts of dialogue, massive amounts of storylines, a huge range of emotions based on what their character's going through. So not everybody gets to be a series regular. You have to be really, really well trained and have really proven yourself as an actor in the business before you land that coveted job. And there are hundreds of thousands of actors trying to get a series regular role because that's where the big money is. 
That's where the big money is for agents and managers. That's where the big money is for actors. That's where the endorsement deals come from when you're famous from TV, from a series regular role or a movie. So you can't just wing it and hope you become a series regular. That is like catching lightning in a bottle. It could happen once in a blue moon, but not likely. But it will happen if you work hard for it. And if you're working hard to get co-stars, working hard to get guest stars, if you're getting some recurring roles, if you're doing a bunch of uh, non-union, I mean, union feature films, and you're getting your name out there, and you're building a great body of work, you could then get in the running for series regular. When you are auditioning for series, when you're auditioning for anything, series regulars do not have pre-reads. Okay, so let me explain what a pre-read is. A pre-read is if you're if the casting director's never seen you before, they haven't heard of you, they don't know you, you've never auditioned for them, they have no idea what you can do, they're going to pre-read you, meaning they're going to audition you before they send you to producers. If you're a casting director, the producer hired you. The producers hired you and said, okay, cast this for us. And the producers are the boss of the casting director. Casting directors have bosses. Casting directors don't decide who gets the role. Casting directors make suggestions on who they think is best for the role. So a casting director will say, okay, I'm going to look at 500 tapes. I'm going to pull out 50 that I think really would be good for this. I'm going to pre-read some of these because I don't know them all. And then I'm going to give the tapes I think are best to the producers. The producers are going to look at them and they're going to say, okay, let's call back these people or whatever. Now, sometimes a casting director will call some people back. They'll audition them once in a pre-read and go, okay, I don't want any of these people, but these 20 I really like. So now let's call them back and see what they, let's look at them further. And then they're going to narrow that down to five. Remember, they're narrowing it down to one eventually. So maybe they had 5,000 pictures. Maybe they auditioned 50 people. Some of them the casting director already knew, so they sent them straight to producers. Others they didn't know at all, so they pre-read them first and see if they're ready for producers, if they're good enough to go to producers. And But remember, that's a completely different list than the series regulars. Okay, If they're pre-reading you, you're not at a series regular level, not in that office. The studio is going to make a decision the network is going to make a decision on who gets to be a series regular, not the casting director. But the casting director has the tremendous power of choosing who comes into audition. Directors also can choose who comes in. Producers can choose who comes in. Showrunners can choose who comes in. Networks can choose who comes in. And they all give a list to the casting director and say, we want all of these people to be considered. So this is a very interesting post that she's giving a little bit of this information. And she says I could elaborate on all of these, which I just did. Um, but it's not necessary for the, for, she says it's a good, it's good terminology to fa familiarize yourself with. Uh, in that I agree with that very much. I want to tell you about um, what is a chemistry read. So there's different levels of auditioning, like I've said, okay. The pre-read is the very, very first one. It means nobody knows who you are and they want to see what you're about before they send you any further up the chain. Okay, once they've decided that when they bring you in for a pre-read, you did a really good job and you took direction and they really liked your take of the character. So now they're going to give you a callback. If you fit the role, they'll give you a callback. After the callback, then you're going to go to producers. And it's called a producer's session. And in that producer's session, you know, you're going to get notes from the producer now about your role. Okay, we like that, but let's see it like this. And can you maybe do this? And what do you think about that? Uh, try this instead. And they want to see if you can take direction because when you get on set, that's what the director's going to do. The director's going to give you direction on what they want to see. So you have to be able to take what they said and change what you're doing and implement their notes. So in, in auditions, they're checking a couple things. Are you right for the role? Was the way that you interpreted the script and brought it to life an interesting idea for them? Does that maybe a possibility? Can you take direction? So let's say the answer is yes, you did all of that well, then you go to callbacks, then you go to producer sessions, and now the producer narrows it down to like five people out of 50, out of originally 5,000 submissions. Those five people are going to go test for the network. It's going to be a very separate and different audition. And you're going to test on camera to see, 
you know, what you look like on camera. It used to be called a screen test, right? They want to see what you look like on camera, and they want to see how everyone looks on camera, and then they do a chemistry read, a chemistry. There, the lighting. Then they do a chemistry read. The chemistry read is, let's say they've cast the female, and they want that female to read with three or four different guys to see who has chemistry who really pops off the screen and looks like they really could be in love, you know? Who creates good energy together? Or who really could play a mother and a father or a daughter and a son? Or They want to see how these people fit together. So sometimes they haven't cast the female. There's three choices of female and two choices of male. They're going to mix and match, it's called, and test all of these people together and see who has chemistry. And eventually they're going to narrow it down to the two people that they hired, the lead, female lead and the male lead, or the mother and the father and the son and the daughter, and that's who's going to get offered the role. Now, what's really important to remember is even if you get offered the role, you could the role could be given to somebody else. When a casting director is casting for a project, the first thing they do is make a list of people they think would be perfect for it. And the casting director may say to the director and the producer, we really want uh, Scarlett Johansson in this role and they send the script to Scarlett and Scarlett says I love this script but I'm shooting four other movies and I don't have the time then they're going to decide are we going to put this project on hold until she's available or are we just going to not have her and we're going to offer the role to somebody else so direct offers go out first for the main roles direct offers go out first that means that actors not auditioning she, uh, Scarlett Johansson is not auditioning for roles. People are sending her the script and saying, you know, please do it, please. And if she can, if she likes the script, if she's not, if she has time to shoot it, if they're paying her the right amount of money, the answer could be yes. But let's say she decides that they bring on a director she doesn't want to work with. And she says, you know what, if you said it, I'm not going to do this film. If she hasn't signed a contract, you know, and even then, sometimes they will sue to get out of a contract. But the lead could fall through. The scheduling could fall through. The lead could fall through. And now that, goes, that offer goes to somebody else. There are different levels of hierarchy in this business. There's people that get direct offers, like Tom Cruise or... Tom Hiddleston or somebody who's just getting a script and they're saying, hey, we want you in this role. Can you do it? There are people that, okay, Tom Hiddleston's not available, Scarlett Johansson. Let's find someone who's like Scarlett Johansson. So they're going to try to find someone who's got the same essence and the same vibe or another actress at her level who brings a different quality, but it's not her. So they're going to offer that role to someone else. It's called a direct offer. You will get to the point in your career where some of the roles that you are offered are direct offers. That means the producers and the directors and the network, they know you and they want you in the role, period. It could be for a series regular role. It could be for a role in a film. It could be for a role in a TV show. Oh, this, I just got a note that says a co-star class begins on Friday. Uh, I will tell you about this. Actor site. If you're an, an actor somewhere and you're watching this and you're like, I want to be, you know, book some co-stars on television. Actor site, actor site, S-I-T-E dot com, has a great new co-star class that you could take online and it teaches you the basics of how to audition for a co-star. So look that up, actorsite.com, and it just popped up on my screen, so that's on, on Facebook um, as a notification, so I thought I'd share it. Why not? Uh, yeah, so those are the different levels. You've got the pre-read, which is brand new actors nobody knows, and you've got the direct offer, which is actors that have been around for a while and people know their work. And then there's a whole bunch of things in between. You're going in for co-stars, guest stars, recurring roles, and casting has a list of people they want to see. People that are getting a direct offer, people that they really like and think would be good for a thing, a, a, a project, and they don't even bother with the pre-reads or callbacks. They just go straight to producers. And you're going to climb the ranks of those audition levels over time. So please give yourself time in this business. Please don't worry about, oh, my God, I need to do this all today or I'm going to explode. You know, that puts way too much pressure on you as an actor and you have way too much to lose in the audition and then you get so nervous and so overwhelmed because you want it so bad that you don't do a great job. Your job is to take that script and interpret it 
and make it your own and bring that character to life. And then when you get the audition, you have an audience. Act like you already have the job and you're showing up to show them your performance. And then walk out of there thankful for the opportunity and completely let it go. Don't wait to hear from them. Don't expect to hear anything. Just move on to your next audition. And if you get a call back, wow, great for you. And if you keep going and you get a producer session, great for you. And if you keep going and you get to the network and you test or chemistry read, great for you. And if you get offered the role, congratulations, you booked it. Most of the time, you're not going to book it because the odds are stacked against you. That doesn't mean you won't book some. You will book some and you will have a career and you will work as an actor. But not even a star can do every role they're offered. And not even well-known actors that you see on TV book everything. You know, there's a lot of times if you watch YouTube videos and you watch actors be interviewed, they'll say, you know, I didn't get it. I really wanted that role, but someone else got it. And it, like Matt Damon got it and Ben Affleck wanted it or, you know, something like that. What a lot of actors do is they start creating their own production company and they start putting themselves in their own projects. And they say, you know what? I'm done auditioning. I'm going to start creating my own projects and put myself in them. And I'm not waiting for anyone else. Well, you don't have to wait until you're a star to do that. You can start creating your own films right now. But we'll talk about that in a future video. I'm Wendy Elaine Wright. Follow me on Instagram, Wendy Elaine one and I'll see you in my Facebook group, Talent Managers for Actors. And if you take my course, Hollywood Winter Circle Academy, I will see you every single week for one year coaching you personally. I'll see you later. Have a great day. See you on the red carpet. And don't let anything stop you from what you want to achieve in life, especially you. Don't stop yourself. You can do it.